Hello and welcome to the episode 329 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The Beatles' last appearance on Saturday Club, a Christmas record, and John Lennon sending his MBE medal back to the Queen are the main stories of the day. Let's start as usual with the 25th of November 1960 performance that the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, had at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for the continuation of their first residence in town. George Harrison, instead, was in Liverpool after his deportation from West Germany for working underage. See episode 325 for that. Two years later, in 1962, the Beatles were still a quartet, but the lineup had changed, crystallizing in its definitive form. George Harrison and John Lennon on guitar and voice, Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Ringo Starr on drums, and occasionally voice too. On this date, the band was busy with an evening concert at a Cavern Club in Liverpool. On this date in 1963, the Beatles were at the Granada TV Centre in Manchester, filming an interview also featuring the comical interludes of Ken Dodd. They also mimed music performances for two songs, I Want to Hold Your Hand and This Boy. Part of the interview and I Want to Hold Your Hand were used on the 27th of November for Late Scene Extra, aired between 11.45 pm and midnight. The rest of the interview and the performance of This Boy were used on the 20th of December in Scene at 6.30, between 6.30 and 7 pm. Another session in 1964, with the Fabs busy at the Studio One of the Aeolian Hall in London, to record their tenth and last music session for BBC Radio's Sunday Club, to be aired on the 26th of December between 10 am and 12 noon. Between 7 and 10.30 pm, the band recorded rock and roll music and Kansas City Hey 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 Hey, plus an interview with host Brian Matthew. In addition to the two songs, the show aired another four numbers, I'm a Loser, Everybody's Trying to Be My Baby, I Feel Fine, and She's a Woman. These were repeats from the 17th of November Top Gear sessions. Time for some Christmas shopping in 1965, with Harrods, the famous luxury department store in London, opened for three hours just for the Beatles, to allow them to do their shopping without being sieged by their own fans. John brought a garden slide for his son Julian, George and Ringo brought some furniture. And what better time for my call to action? If you're feeling the festivities and you want to lend me a hand for the creation of music-related content of ever-increasing quality, check out the list of things you can do on www.simonmas.com support. Most of the entries are things that just require a minute of your time, really. If instead you feel like spending some money, you can do worse than buying the NFTs of the deluxe extended version of this very podcast. Apart from the pleasure to listen to hours of extra material, you might be lucky enough to see their value rise with each passing month. Think about it, and thank you for taking action. Talking about Christmas, on the 25th of November 1966, the Beatles were at Dick James's offices in London to record their annual free greeting to their official fan club. As you will recall, Dick James was the Beatles' publisher, the main shareholder of Northern Songs. One year later, in 1967, BBC Radio One's Where It's At aired between 2 and 3 pm, featured quite a bit of coverage of the Magical Mystery Tour double EP release, plus an interview of John Lennon by hosts Kenny Everett and Chris Denning. Paul McCartney also contributed to the show with two jingles featuring him on vocals and piano. 
all the songs from the WP were broadcast during the show. After the program, the BBC decided to ban I Am The Warriors without an official announcement to avoid any fanfare. The management feared that the listeners would have found the line You Let Your Kickers Down objectionable. Let's close the episode with a curious round of letters written today in 1969. The matter at hand was John Lennon's decision to return his MBE medal. The reasons explained in writing to the Queen, the Prime Minister Harun Wilson and the Secretary of the Central Chancery of the Orders of Knighthood were simple. John wanted to protest against the UK involvement in Biafra, the nation's support to the US war in Vietnam and, well, for cold turkeys leaping down the chart. The gesture immediately stirring up a storm in the press had no effect on the award itself, as it could have never been revoked. John was available all day in his office at Apple for journalists and broadcasters, happy to get more publicity for his peace stance. This concludes our episode today. Tomorrow we'll see how John Lennon worked on a Plastic Ono Band single that never was using two songs recorded by the Beatles. Can you imagine which ones they were? Write me your guess in the comments and we'll find out tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.